30k yes 30k dance 30k dance 30k dance 30k dance take it to cow 30k dance 30k dance 30k dance 30k dance Bitches on my dick cause I'm so 30k yo base god What should we do? You should, uh, review something, hey? Review something. I like it. I like it. You're a smart man. Blood Ceremony is a Canadian rock band. And this is their latest LP, Living with the Ancients, their sophomore album, in fact. And this brings me back to earlier this year, when I was loving the album Opus Eponymous by the band Ghost, Swedish metal band. And though they don't play the same style of metal that Blood Ceremony does, both of them do bring a very occult vibe into their metal. And Blood Ceremony brings that vibe in a way that embraces the old school sounds of doom metal. Not the sleep, electric wizard, I'm gonna hit the bong kind of doom metal, the Black Sabbath style of doom metal. Just these heavy, dark guitar riffs that that scream Tony Iommi! Very brooding and very bluesy too. I will say some of the guitar riffs here do feel a little familiar, I guess, like they could have been on a lot of different records from way back when. I'm not saying these guys are forging a new sound, but this LP is not just some kind of Sabbath revival. It's not as simple as that. The band's lead singer, Alia O'Brien, plays both organ and flute, and <laughs> believe me when I say she does not hesitate to break the flute out for a good chunk of these tracks. I'm talking some serious flute rock here, and when you're talking flute rock, you gotta talk tall. Jethro Tull, who Tony Iommi actually played with for a little bit, but he didn't stay with them. He was still in Earth, who would eventually become Black Sabbath. So because of that, Living with the Ancients is kind of like this fantasy rock collaboration that never actually happened. I could really tell from the way she's playing the flute on these tracks that she's listened to Ian Anderson, she listens to Tull, and Oh, she's so fiery when she plays on some of these tracks. I especially love her playing on the last track, Daughter of the Sun, where the band brings the music to just this, this perfect and overwhelming climax to close out the album. They just go so hard. Sinister melodies everywhere. Organ and guitar. Mm. I mean, the track literally sounds like Pandora's box has opened and demons and ghosts are flying out in every direction. And who are you gonna call? Nobody. Because Ghostbusters wasn't real. It was a movie. Bill Murray can't save you now. But there are some moments here where the flute-oriented tracks take it down a notch and don't rock so much as play something that is a little bit more fit for the Renaissance Fair. I know that sounds dorky, but I like it. Tracks like The Hermit or The Witch's Dance, they totally have a folky, medieval vibe to them. The only other things I can really speak positively on with this album are the interplay between these guys and the songwriting. I mean, when this band rocks, they rock. Some of the instrumental moments here where they're playing off of each other are just so energizing to me. And the solos, the improvising that I sense is going on in this album. I like that these guys are playing, you know, an older style of metal music, an older style of rock, but they've also brought back that strong, strong playing and musicianship that usually comes hand in hand with this kind of stuff. The only issue I have with this LP, and it's one that I can't completely ignore, it's with the vocals, the lead vocals. I like the idea of having a female singing for this band. I wouldn't like a male. It's perfect with a female. All these lyrics about witches and the occult, it's better with a female. And there are moments on Night of Augury where they've multi-tracked O'Brien's voice and just these 
vocals together layered on top of each other just reaching for as high as they can go and I'm just seduced, I'm sold, I'm into it, I'm bowing down, I'm joining the cult. But on other moments like The Great God Pan or Coventry, I don't know about you but to me she's kind of like dragging her notes out a little bit longer than she should. She's audibly kind of strained for me and she's just forcing herself to put on this vibrato that takes away more than it adds. Is the vibrato there to sound dark? Is it there to sound dramatic? I don't know. It just kind of sounds like the way a lady who fronts some kind of local bar band would sing that did Led Zeppelin covers every weekend. But the thing is, I love so many things about this album. The recording, the songwriting, the musicianship, the instrumentation, that for the most part I can just sit there and take it and enjoy everything else that Blood Ceremony has to offer. And it's funny because uh, a vocal I don't like would usually ruin an album for me completely. But I think this is a very solid LP. I enjoyed it. Cohesive sound. A nice bit of revivalism that sounds like a bunch of things, but not one single thing. Kind of like the record that should have been. So I'm feeling a decent to strong seven on this one. Links below on YouTube and also on the needledrop.com where you can hear a little bit of this album. Definitely recommend that you listen to this if you're into metal, old school metal, the dark stuff. Or if you were into that ghost album I loved. What do you think of this? Love it? Hate it? Why? And what should I review next? 30k? Forever.